Before I came to the United States, I was a dentist and a professor of dentistry in Rwanda. For more than 25 years, I helped all kinds of people I could, and I provided services everywhere, at school, at hospital, and in the community. But there were other situations in my life as well. In 1994, a million of Tutsi were killed in Rwanda by Hutu extremists, and I'm one of the survivors of the Rwanda Tutsi genocide. My life was destroyed. I lost my relatives, my families, my friends, and my home. But I lived through the trauma and the nightmare of the, and our full memories of what happened. But after the genocide ended, survivors still experience and still suffer. They experience injustice that exists in the government. And I'm one of the victims of injustice. So I free my country to come and seek asylum in the U.S. What does it mean for a survivor like me? I lost my relative. I lost my home. I lost my friends. And when I came here in 2010, I lived in Portland, in a homeless shelter. And I remember one day, I spent an entire day crying because immediately I felt the prejudice that people in men have against immigrants and non-white people. For example, I remember I was sitting on a table and two white women came. They didn't want to sit first, but ended by coming and sitting and started shutting between them. One of them told the other, did you think about these black people coming from Africa to men? They have tuberculosis. We need to be more careful. And another day, I was waiting on a line at the general assistance because I couldn't walk. And one guy came and shouted loudly with a big voice and anger and said, why are you here? You just came to get our benefits. I couldn't walk, so I rely on general assistance. I was getting help with food, with clothes, and other basic needs. But I felt I was, lo I was losing some values, like my self-respect, my dignity. Everyone needs to be respected, no matter what he or she is going through. If you are immigrant or non-white person or refugee, or everybody deserves respect. Then I use to try to struggle to find life in men. 
I went through the process of asylum. I was, I am very thankful because I could get a lawyer through ILAP for free who took my case and I was able to apply for asylum before the, dead, the one year deadline for our asylum application. Back home, I have some special holidays were very hard for me because living in Rwanda, I spent Christmas time with my children, my family, my relatives. We usually have a big gathering and our door was open for everybody. People will come in, we will share our food, we will dance together. And my home was full of joy. Yet my first Christmas in men was so hard. Nobody knows me. I have met some people at church in the community, but no one invited me to their home. I stayed in my cold apartment. I cooked food, but I couldn't eat. It was so hard because I was not used to spend Christmas alone. After spending, sending my asylum, I had to wait seven months before I could have an interview with an officer, asylum officer. And then I have to wait seven ma six months to know if I could stay in men. I never felt home before the decision was taken. By then, I was taking some English classes, literacy, financial literacy classes, and I was, I was involved myself in the asylum-seeking community by helping people who just came to men. Then, even I was very busy, the discouragement and the depression I felt, I'm not able to express it now. After I get the decision, I had to face another huge challenge of getting a reliable job. I said I was a dentist and a professor of dentistry for 25 years, but I couldn't find a job because of my accent and language differences. Being after I get my salon decision, I felt I could live in men and I choose men as my home. But we as I'm very thankful because the US government gave me the permission to stay here and to allow me to live free. But we as asylee would like to ask you people in men to think about the process could be faster so we could have a sense of home again after fleeing our home because of violence. 
And I would like to ask you to understand that behind every asylum seeker, there is a powerful person with a powerful story of what someone gave up and someone he has to leave. All of us, we would like to live in men and to feel home. Making home take time to everyone. Thank you.